In the first part of this video, I'm going to share a position with you in the ETF SCHD. It's a position that we're neutral to bullish on, and we like to stick with this position for quite a while. So it'll be a nice example of how to trade cover call options against a stock or ETF that you like to own for the long term. And in the second half of this video, well, it's going to be kind of tough because we're going to look at a position in which the stock is down over 70% since we first started trading in it. I'm going to show you how we've been working covered calls over the past few years to consistently lower our out-of-pocket costs on this position as well as help repair the position. This will help you see how you can use covered calls to generate cash on stocks you want to own long-term and on positions that have gone against you to help repair those positions. We'll first talk to my position in SCHD. That's a very popular ETF. It's a nice dividend paying ETF. And this is what I've been trading in my small option trading account. Here you see that five months ago, we entered a cover call position in SCHD. We did that by buying 100 shares of SCHD and simultaneously, we sold to open the May 19th $73 cover call option. As a result, we're a total out of pocket $71.82 per share. Let me talk you through the five trades we've done in this SCHD cover call so you can see how you can use cover calls to generate cash flow in a position that you'd like to stay in for a while. So initially you see that here on April 14th, we entered this cover call position. At that time, SCHD was trading for just under $74 per share. To give ourselves some protection in case SCHD declined, we sold the $73 covered call strike price. And I did that because as you can see here on this daily chart, SCHD had just recently had a nice advance of over 5%. So I wanted to give us some cushion just in case SCHD came down a little bit. And remember, we sold that May 19th covered call option. Well, over the next month and a half, SCHD did indeed come down. In fact, on the day we did this trade, SCHD was down just over 4% from the day that we entered this position. Now at this point, SCHD wasn't looking overly bullish, so we let the May option expire worthless, and we sold this July option for 50 cents per share. One reason I was happy with that return is because as you can see here, SCHD was about to go ex-dividend in June. In fact, on June 21st, it went ex-dividend, and that gave us the right to pocket the 66 cents per share dividend. That helped improve our return on top of this 50 cents per share that we received for this covered call option. Well, what happened? Over the next month, SCHD had a nice advance of over 4%, but then it pretty much gave all that back. And on June 26th, it was trading for right at $71 per share. And that's actually the date that we pocketed this dividend. But after that, SCHD took off. Over the next month, it advanced over 6%. So that on July 21st, it was trading for right at $75 per share. That meant that our $73 cover call option was right at $2 in the money. Remember, this was a position that we wanted to stick with for quite a while because it's a really nice diversified dividend paying ETF. So as you can see here, on July 21st, we bought to close the July 21st cover call option at that $73 strike price, and we sold to open the September 15th $74 cover call. So we rolled that strike price up by a dollar, but we had to go out two months to do that. But in so doing, we were to pocket 25 cents per share. Now in addition to all this cover call premium we had already collected, and the dividends we had received, we're now able to benefit if SCHD stayed above that $74 strike price by expiration. Over the next approximately two months, SCHD basically traded sideways to down since it was down right at 1.4%. So that brings us to today, September 13th. And notice in the far right, the SCHD is trading for right at $73.60 per share. So that $74 cover call option that expires this Friday is just out of the money. Since SCHD has just made a lower high on this daily chart, I decided instead of rolling that $74 strike price up to $75, I decided we're most likely just going to roll it out in time. So here you see the order we have sitting out there to roll this cover call position. We're trying to roll this SCHD September 15th $74 cover call option out by one month to October 20th at that same $74 strike price, and we're trying to get 75 cents per share. Now right now the order hasn't been filled yet, but we still have two days until expiration, so it's quite possible that this might get filled. If not, we'll adjust the strike price. So as you can see, SCHD has had a nice run, and it's showing some bullish characteristics. Because of that, I rolled that $73 strike price up to 74 as we rolled it out in time. And now we'll wait and see if SCHD continues to look bullish. If it does, then we'll keep trying to roll that strike price up so we can benefit not only from collecting this nice dividend and also pocketing the cover call option premium, but also from some stock price appreciation. So if you own a stock like SCHD that you don't want caught away from you, you just wanna make sure that you don't let those cover call options get too far in the money. In fact, if you really wanna make sure that's not caught away from you, you wanna make sure that you're selling out of the money covered call options. For example, with this trade, if I really didn't want SCHD to be caught away from me, I'd be looking to sell the $75 cover call option. If I wanted to be even more careful, I'd be looking to sell the 76 
or $77 covered call option. That'd give FCHD some room, come up in price, and our covered call option would still not be challenged. So that's how to trade one that you'd like to hold on to. What about a stock position where the stock is really going against you? Maybe a chart that looks kind of like this. This is the chart of MPW. Notice that we started trading in MPW back in February of 2022. And since that time, the stock has dropped over 70%. Now, obviously, if we had known it was going to drop this much, we'd never have entered this position. In fact, we probably would have bought some put options or been selling call options or been selling some bearish called credit spreads against it. But the fact is, as an option trader, every trade isn't going to go your way. And I'm sharing with you one of the worst positions we've had over the past few years to help you see how you can use covered call options to help repair a position like this MPW position. So let's talk through all the trades I've done in MPW. Let me share with you why I rolled the strike prices up and down. And then at the end of this, I'm going to show you where we're at with this position. Over here on the far left, you said on February 7th of 2022, which is right about a year and a half ago, we began to sell cash secure put options against MPW. Well, you might say, Randy, why were you doing that? So now I've zoomed the chart out so you can see a little bit of the history before we entered this position. Notice the MPW had been having a nice advance and then recently retraced to right at this red 200 moving average, which is like a spot that MPW most likely would find support. And indeed for a few days, it did find support, but then it began its decline. As a result, as you can see here on June 16th, we we're assigned these shares of MPW. Now going back here, when we first started this trade, we've been selling the $21 and $20 cash secure put options. So as a result, on June 16th, we were assigned MPW at $20 per share. And we had sold a few put options at the $21 strike price, so we bought 200 shares of MPW at $21 and 1,200 shares of MPW at $20 per share. At that point, the stock was trading down 33% from where it was trading when we began those cash secure put option positions. And it was trading for right around $14.50 per share. As you can see here, to give ourselves some room to benefit, if MPW came back up on June 16th, we sold the third Friday of July covered call options at $15 per share. That let MPW come up about 60 cents per share before this put option was challenged. Remember, we're hoping to get out of this for a profit. We have been assigned MPW mostly at the $20 per share strike price. So at $15, we're looking at a pretty substantial loss there of about $5 per share. Now I'm briefly going to switch over here to my Excel spreadsheet, which shows all of our trades in MPW. As you can see here, after being assigned 200 shares at $21 per share on March 17th, on June 16th, we were assigned 1,200 more shares at $20 per share. So for these 1,400 shares that we now own, after collecting all that option premium by selling cash to put options, our out-of-pocket cost for these shares was right at $17.85 per share. But what happened next? MPW had a decent advance of right about 8.5% over the next month. As a result, on July 15th, it was trading for right at $15.50 per share. Because of that, as you can see here, I decided to roll our cover call strike price up to $16. In order to do that for a credit, we had to roll out to October. We were able to pocket a credit of 14 cents per share and get the cover call strike price up by $1 just in case MPW continued to go up in price. Over the next 19 days, MPW did indeed go up in price. In fact, it went up over 11%, but then it began another steep decline. Over the next two months, it declined over 31%. So as a result, on September 28th, I decided to go ahead and roll that October cover call. So we bought to close the third Friday of October, a $16 cover call option, and sold to open the third Friday of November, $14 call option. For that, we pocketed 40 cents per share. Fast forward about a month to October 21st, and we find MPW still trading about that same price. And it didn't look like it was about to go up in price anytime soon, so I decided to roll that $14 strike price down to 12 as we rolled it out to the third Friday of November. For that, we pocketed another 40 cents per share. Well, over the next four weeks, MPW actually began to look bullish again. So on October 14th, with a trading for around $12.50 per share, I decided to roll that November cover call option out to January and roll it up to $13. That'd give MPW about another 50 cents to go up before our $13 cover call option was challenged. Now we didn't pocket much. As you can see here for that trade, we only pocketed five cents per share. But something to keep in mind is that during this whole process, when we own these shares, we're collecting some really nice dividends. In fact, over the past year and a half or so, we've collected right at $1.45 per share in just dividends. That's in addition to all the cover call option premium that we've been collecting. Well, what happened? Over the next two months, MPW did go up in price. In fact, it went up almost 10% during that time frame. And on January 17th, it was trading for right at $13.50 per share. Notice up top, 
But as a result of this new bullishness, we decided to roll that strike price up to $14 as we rolled it out. So we bought to close the January $13 cover call option and sold to open the February $14 cover call option. For that, we pocketed 15 more cents per share. Over the next month, MPW showed a little bit of weakness as it was down about 4% by the time we rolled that February cover call option. So with it trading just below $13 per share, on February 15th, I decided to go ahead and roll the cover call option out to April and up to $14 just in case MPW continued to show some strength. So we sold to open the April $14 cover call option and we were able to pocket 59 cents per share for that cover call option. But then MPW had another big decline. In fact, it declined right at 23% over the next 22 or so days. Seeing that it was showing renewed weakness, I didn't want to wait until April to do something about this cover call option. So on March 10th, I decided to go ahead and roll this cover call option down to $9 with that same April expiration. You see, MPW had recently just breached that $9 area. In fact, it had done it that day. And with that renewed weakness, I felt comfortable selling this lower strike price call option at $9. For that trade, we pocketed another 57 cents per share. And then about a week later, with MPW having made recent lower lows, I decided that in addition to doing cover call option and collecting the dividends we've been collecting, I decided to do a bearish call credit spread. So as you can see here in my notes, on March 16th, we sold to open the third Friday of April, $8 call options and bought for protection the $12 call option. For that bearish call credit spread, we pocketed 58 cents per share. Now fast forward to April 19th, with MPW trading for right around $8.40 per share, I decided to go ahead and close that bearish call credit spread out and just roll a $9 cover call option out. Now we didn't get much, but for closing that bearish call credit spread out, as well as rolling our cover call option out to the third Friday of June, we pocketed right at four cents per share. As you can see here over the next few months, that was actually a good decision because MPW went up in price, so it had experienced an over 11% increase in price during that time frame. Because of its renewed strength, on June 12th, I rolled the cover call option out to the third Friday of August and up to the $10 strike price. And for that, as you can see here, we pocketed 20 more cents per share. I did that because notice what had happened on this daily chart. It had recently broke through this green 50 moving average. It had made a new higher high and a couple of new higher lows. So I wanted to make sure that if MPW did continue to go up in price, we'd be able to benefit from that price appreciation. Well, over the next month and a half, that's exactly what happened. MPW went up right at 13% until it ran against the red tuna moving average on this daily chart. It then declined over 25% over the next three weeks. So that on August 14th, we're trading for just under $8 per share. With that renewed weakness, I decided to roll our $10 strike price down to $9 as we rolled it out. So I bought to close the August $10 cover call option and sold to open the third Friday of October $9 cover call. And for that, we collected 21 cents per share. And we're still about a month out from this October expiration. So we're just kind of letting that option sit out there. As you can see, MPW has continued to decline. And in fact, it's trading right around an area that previously served as support for it several weeks ago. So will that support hold? Well, we don't know yet. We're gonna give it a chance to see if that support holds. And if not, and it continues to show weakness, then we'll roll this cover call strike price down again as we roll it out. So obviously this is a position that if I had known how bad it was gonna go, I would have never entered this position. But as option stock traders, sometimes you have positions that go against you. And as option traders, we have a lot of tools at our disposal to repair positions that have gone against us. So what does this position look like as compared to if we had owned the stock outright and had not been trading cover call options in it this whole time? Well, let me show you. Here you see this spreadsheet reflecting all the trades we've done in MPW over the past couple of years. Now, as I scroll down here, you'll see this area right in here is where we were assigned our shares. We were assigned 200 shares at $21 per share and 1,200 shares at $20 per share. At this point, we began selling these cover call options against these shares that we own. Now keep in mind that over this time frame, MPW is down over 70%. That 70% equates to is down over $15 per share. Well, what about our position? How much are we down? Yes, we are down, but cover calls have made this a lot less painful for us. In the bottom here in yellow, you see that as a result of selling all these options, our out-of-pocket cost for these shares is right at $13.04 per share. And we're still down a lot more than I'd like to be, but cover call options have drastically improved our position. In fact, as you can see here, even though MPW is down over $15 per share, with it trading for $6.43 per share right now, we're actually down only $6.62 per share. Now that's still a lot. Don't get me wrong, I don't like it. I don't like losing. But I do know that as an option trader, we're going to lose on some positions and selling cover call options is one nice way to prepare a position that's going against you. And as you can see, that can make a big difference.